G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for what is finally my last video before I jet off to Europe. I've been making a lot of noise about it for the last few weeks, but Sunday is the day where I finally leave. Today, we're gonna go out with a bang with one of my favorite kind of videos, and I'm gonna actually predict the final 2019 AFL ladder for you. Please bear in mind, this video is intended just as a fun prediction. This video does come with a severe trigger warning, because I'm certain there will be a large percentage of you that will be very unhappy with where I've put your team on the final ladder. That's okay though, because I'd like to hear from you guys. Comment down below exactly where you think I've gone right or where I've gone so, wrong. Let's start our way from the bottom of the ladder and work our way up team by team. First cab off the rank and in last place is the Gold Coast Suns. And I know that will seem a little bit brutal because they started the season three and one after four rounds. For me personally, while I was really impressed with their start of the season, they to me look like a young side that is starting to fatigue and fade out a bit. I love the fight they've shown this season. And for me, they've definitely surpassed expectations, but personally, I think they'll be leapfrogged by the Blues and climb into last spot. For me, it is hard to peg exactly how many winnable games Carlton have left this year, although I do have my eye on their home game against Gold Coast later this year at Marvel. For me, that'll probably be the decisive game on who wins the spoon this year. I'll give the Blues a nod here. I reckon they'll win that game and climb into 17th spot on percentage. In 16th spot, I've got the Melbourne Demons. I do feel a bit bad having the Demons slot into third last here because I do actually expect them to improve throughout the rest of the season. Bizarrely, I've got them in third last despite them winning seven games, which may or may not be ridiculous, but I think it really speaks to the evenness around that part of the ladder. With finals off the agenda, I do expect the Demons to play with a little bit more freedom this year and we'll see gradual improvement, but not enough to rise too far up the ladder. In 15th spot, I've got St Kilda and they are probably a little bit unlucky to round out my bottom four for this year. I've got them winning eight games, which is quite reasonable, but personally looking at their form this year and the teams they've beaten, plus the way they lost to Brisbane last week, I personally see them sliding back into the bottom four come season's end. In 14th spot, I have the Western Bulldogs who at times have looked great this year, but on the whole have been really inconsistent. On their best day, they are fantastic, but on their worst day, they've been really poor and lost to teams like Gold Coast and Carlton. I've said this before, personally, I think they're building towards something big in the medium term future, but for now, I've got them sliding into fifth last. In 13th spot, I've got the Kangaroos who you'd have to say just have not lived up to expectations this year. They loaded up on experienced talent. They were expected to play finals, but to be honest, they just started the season so lacklustre and they've really missed the mark. They do look revitalized to some extent. I think they've won three of their last four and I do expect that improvement to continue, but not enough to rise past 13th spot. In 12th spot, I have the Hawks who complete a little bit of a fall from grace here after they finished top four last year. I openly admit I have a hard time placing the Hawks in the competition. We know they're in a bit of a transition period and they're definitely up and down. It is hard not to fall victim to recency bias here because Hawks have actually dropped their last three in pretty average fashion. But for me, I have them sliding out of finals contention and slotting into 12th spot on the the final ladder. Completing a bit of a resurgence, I have the Sydney Swans sliding into 11th spot. With or without Buddy, I think the Swans have been playing with a real renewed spirit. They've got a really competitive culture, which means they don't get belted a lot and their percentage is and will stay healthy in my opinion. They've impressed me with their recent form. We know how good they can be on their day and that's why I've got them leapfrogging a few teams and into 11th spot on the final ladder. Now Essendon are a notoriously hard team to place in this competition and that's why I've got them outside the finals in 10th spot. Some weeks the Dons look like real contenders and other weeks they look a bit meek. Their best footy is really great to watch in my opinion, but a team as inconsistent as that, I can't place in the final eight. So I've got them in 10th spot with 10 wins. Now this next prediction might break a few hearts, but after running the AFL ladder predictor, I've actually got Brisbane missing the finals in ninth spot. They've had a brilliant season for their expectations. They've been able to nurture and develop some really good talent up there. The mature age players are playing really well, but I think their consistency is what will cost them in the end. And it's a pretty even finals race in my opinion. I hate to say it, but I have them just missing out on finals. Now the Dockers, perhaps somewhat controversially, are my first team to make the top eight this year. To be honest, this is the best injury run Fremantle have copped in several years. And I think a few people have forgotten how good their mature players actually are. It's not necessarily their youth or their the recruits that are driving the improvement like some people pegged. It's guys like Fife, Hill, Walters, Alex Pierce before he get injured, Luke Ryan, the guys who have been there for a little bit longer. With two big wins away from home this year, they've shown they can match it with the heavyweights away from home. And for me, that spells finals for them in 2019. Now in seventh spot, I have selected the enigmatic Port Adelaide. Now, last year, we all know they were 11 and four and fell to miss the finals completely. But this year, I've got them sneaking in on 12 wins. 
They do have a tough run home, but I think beating the Cats last week will be enough to galvanize them and hopefully they'll see a bit more of a consistent end to the season. They've also been hit pretty hard with the old injury stick, so I think if that improves, they will play finals this year. In sixth spot and setting up a mouthwatering elimination final, I have the Adelaide Crows. In my mind, they are a clear top six team and it's evident they're starting to regain their confidence after a horror 2018. They're going to be a tough team to beat in Adelaide this year, and that's why I expect them to hold roughly their current position and finish in the top six. In fifth spot, I am predicting a Richmond revival, and they will slot back into the top five once their injury concerns ease a bit. Barring a three-game horror streak going into the bye, the Tigers have played some really good footy this year and at one point sat seven and three. This weekend against the Saints is their last game that isn't at the MCG this year, which is incredible. <laughs> Is incredible the word? I don't know. Look, I think they're a great side on their day. And with that run home, I think there's no doubt they will slot back into the top five. In fourth spot, I have selected the reigning premiers, the West Coast Eagles. Now, while they've definitely had an unconvincing first half of the season, their percentage sits at just 106, their fixture in the first half was rated pretty difficult. So I'm thinking with an easier run, they should at least hold their current position. They do actually have a pretty good injury situation at the moment as well. So if that can remain the case, touch wood, I expect them to, at the very least, hold their current position in the top four. Now the Giants finish in third spot on the ladder for me, but in my mind, they're actually the best challenger to Geelong for the Premiership this year. They're playing as good a football as I've ever seen that club play, and with Lockie Whitfield to come back in the second half of the year, they're gonna be very dangerous. Their side is balanced and mature. I'm thinking this year could potentially be their year. In second spot, I have Collingwood. Like the Eagles, the Pies have been a little bit unconvincing at times this year, but have kind of just done enough to get the results. What is impressive though, and perhaps ominous for the rest of the competition, is that they currently have a top two spot, and they look like they have a couple of gears to go to, to be honest. With the immense star talent on their list, they are a clear contender, and I expect them to finish the home and away season in second spot. In top spot, surprise, surprise, I have the Geelong Cats. For me, they are the absolute benchmark team of the competition this year, and in my opinion, their loss to the Port was probably one they needed to have. With GMHBA being such a fortress that it is and has been for a number of years, I can't see the Cats not banking enough wins to finish this year with the minor premiership. So there it is guys, short and sweet. That was my predicted 2019 final ladder. In terms of finals, I'll probably leave that prediction for closer to that end of the year, but I'm gonna say loosely, I can't help but feel Geelong and GWS are gonna play in the grand final this year and I'm gonna be tipping Geelong from this fire out. Once again, guys, thank you for tuning in and I welcome you to comment below your opinion on my ladder or also just offer your own predictions as well. Like I said, guys, this will probably be my last video for a little while. I'm not too sure how much time I'll get to make videos while I'm away. I'm hoping a little bit, but I just can't promise it. So if I'm not here for a while, try not to miss me too much. If you haven't seen it already, there is a podcast that dropped yesterday on the True Footy YouTube channel where Busher and I spend 80 minutes going through every team and giving them a mid-season report card. So if you're craving some good True Footy content, go check that out with the link uh, I'll leave it. Is it there? Or is it there? I, I think it's there. But yeah, guys, if I don't upload for a while, it won't be long before I'm back. I still have very big plans for this channel, particularly I intend to go absolutely ham with the content going into the finals this year. I'll still be tallying the True Footy Player of the Year award and the brown low count that I've got going as well. So if you want to chuck us a follow on social media, like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever floats your boat, uh, that's a good way to keep up with it. For now, guys, take care. I'm sure it won't be long before I see you somewhere on YouTube. Thanks, guys.